Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, Mishbaha, Shabbat Shalom, Facebook, Shabbat Shalom, everybody here joining us live for our weekly Sabbath message. I am Brother Daniel Brown. It is awesome and wonderful to be back with everybody. Hallelujah. After a nice long break of <clears throat> sickness and doctor appointments and everything, we're back and good to be here today. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so we've already blown the shofars and sang, sang the Shema, so we will open up with a word of prayer today. Avinu Machinu, our Father and our King, we bow ourselves down before you in the mighty, precious name of Yehovah Yeshua, our Messiah, Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for your Sabbath, your set-apart time, your day of rest, a day of stopping, a day of ceasing, a day of praise and worship, a day set apart unto you for your honor and glory and praise. Father in heaven, we thank you for being able to gather together today as Mishpaha, as family, Father, to get into your word, to read it, to study it, to use it, and to apply it to our hearts and to our lives. Father, we pray that you would eliminate any and all distractions. Father, we pray in Yeshua's name that you would give us all ears to hear and eyes to see, that we would be attentive to what thus says Yehovah. Father, set a guard over the door of my lips that nothing would proceed out of my lips that is not from you but only that which is good and edifying and brings you honor and glory and praise. Father in heaven, we pray in Yeshua's name to be humble and teachable and obedient. Do not let us be lifted up with pride and arrogance thinking that we have it all figured out because I know I don't. But Father, it is by your grace and mercy alone that we are all still here today and we praise you for it. Father in heaven, we pray that you would meet with us in great and mighty power today. <clears throat> we welcome you, Father. We welcome you, Yeshua, and we welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this place. Father, may your will be done in all that we say and do today. And may you receive the honor and the glory and the praise in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. All right, so the title of my message today <clears throat> is Blasphemy. Blasphemy, what is it? What does it mean when we blasphemy Yah? What does it mean when we blasphemy the Holy Spirit and His Son, Yeshua? We hear the word blasphemy all through Scripture in the context of it. But does anybody know what it means? <clears throat> There are two types of blasphemy in Scripture. There's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and there's blasphemy of the Son of Man. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. <clears throat> Matthew 12, 31. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. <clears throat> now, personally for myself, I've had some people, I've been talking to some people about the word blasphemy and asking questions about it and what it means. And if I'm being quite honest... I had no earthly idea what it meant. <clears throat> I had heard the term before. <clears throat> I have read the scriptures before multiple, multiple times. I've seen it all through scripture <clears throat> from Genesis to Revelation. But I never truly knew what it meant. <clears throat> and as I was praying and asking the Lord after I had been talking to some people about, about blasphemy, I'm like, God, I don't know what this means. I'm, I'm unlearned in this area. And I firmly believe God said, then do a message on it. Study it out. Learn it. Get to know it. That way you can better yourself. And so what did I do? 
I studied it out the last two weeks and I put together a message. And by Yah's grace and His mercy and His mercy alone, we all will walk away today with a better understanding of what it means to blasphemy the Holy Spirit and blasphemy the Son of Man. <clears throat> So before I get started and we get into the scriptures and to get into the understanding of it, I broke the word blasphemy down in the Hebrew, in the Greek, and I'm also giving the English definition of it. So first in the Hebrew, <clears throat> let's turn to the scripture. Isaiah 52, 5 is where I took it from. <clears throat> Isaiah 52, 5. Now, therefore, what have I here, says Jehovah, that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them make them wail, says Jehovah, says the Lord. And my name is blaspheming continually every day. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. <clears throat> so in the Hebrew, it is H. 5006. It is not, not a toss, and it is found 25 times in the Old Testament. It is a verb, so therefore it means it is an action. It is describing. <clears throat> so the biblical usage of it is to spurn, to despise, to abhor, to reject. And the other words that are used are provoke and renounce. We can find these words in Jeremiah 33, 24, Proverbs chapter number one. I want to turn to Proverbs chapter number one <clears throat> because it talks about Proverbs chapter number one talks about the day and age we're living in right now. I believe firmly <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number one. Verses 24 through 35. <clears throat> let's start in verse number 20. Let's, let's uh, read it all in context. Proverbs 1, starting in verse number 20. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourses. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called, and you have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no one regarded. Because you disdained, you have hated my counsel. You have blasphemed my counsel. That word disdain there is re it can be replaced by the word blasphemy. And none would have at my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. This is what will happen if we don't listen to what thus says Jehovah. What his word says and, we, and this is what happens if we don't take heed to his word. We don't listen to instruction if we turn a deaf ear. This is what will happen in the end. <clears throat> Verse number 24, because I have called and you have refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded, because you disdained all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes, when your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, the fear of Yehovah. They would have none of my counsel and despised my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat of the fruit of their own way, and they will be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. <clears throat> 
So my question is, with reading Proverbs 1, 20 through 33, do we despise the chastening of the Lord? Do we hate the rebuke of what the Word of God says? Do we listen to what the Word of God says? Or do we turn a deaf ear to it? Because if we turn a deaf ear to it, if we don't make time for the Lord in right here, right now, whenever trials and testings and tribulations come upon us, guess what? Yah's going to turn a deaf ear to you and He's going to laugh at you. You chose your own way. All right, you got this. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Proverbs 16, 18, I believe it is. Let me double check that. <clears throat> Just to make sure I got... Yep, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. You think that you got this? Go for it. But Yah says, be humble, take my counsel, listen to what I say. Not what I say, but what thus says Yehovah. Take heed to what the scriptures say. Do not blasphemy his name. Do not despise his word. Do not despise his correction. How many people today despise correction? How many children despise the chastening of their parents? They hate it. And guess what? The parents just, they don't care anymore. They let their children go do whatever they want. Same thing with young adults and adults in general. They don't like to be corrected. None of us like to be corrected. But in order to be in a right standing with Yah, we cannot despise the chastening of the Lord. We're to love correction. We're to love Yah's Word. And if there's anything in this book that goes contrary to us, we have to get rid of us. Not this. We have to get rid of ourselves to walk in His Spirit. Amen? We can also find a good description of this in Psalm 107, verses 11 and 12. <clears throat> Just want to give a good outline description of what <clears throat> some different usages of <clears throat> the word blasphemy is. So Psalm 107, verses 11 and 12. Because they rebelled against the word of, words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High, continuing on. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried out in the, to Yehovah in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. So if we cry out to Yah for the help that we need, if we cry out to him first, he will help us when we are distressed. But don't despise <clears throat> the chastening of the Lord. <clears throat> Going back to Proverbs, chapter number 5, verse number 12. When your flesh and your body are consumed and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised correction? So blasphemy of the Lord is hating instruction, hating righteousness, hating Yah's ways. Is it, is it clicking? Is it making sense? <clears throat> In Proverbs 15, 5, <clears throat> A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. Do you despise our father's correction? whether your earthly father or your heavenly father. Do you listen to what thus says Yehovah? Like I had said, this picture paints here to reject Yah, to reject His laws, to reject His ways, to reject all of Him. <clears throat> Alright. In the Greek, it is G. 988, and it comes from the root word G989. And I already read the scripture, Matthew 12, 31. It can be found five times in the New Testament. Blasphemos, speaking evil of, slanderous, reproachful, railing, abusive, speech injury to others, good name. Reproachful, to a divine 
majesty. <clears throat> I want to read Matthew 12, 31 again, just so <clears throat> we have that understanding. They say that it takes <clears throat> repetition, repetition, repetition in order to get something ingrained into our mind. So what better way than to read the Scriptures, amen? Matthew 12, 31, Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy of the, against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. <clears throat> and if I may, I want to read verses 33 through 37. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, be an evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give an account in it of the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So reading this in context. <clears throat> if our hearts are not circumcised after Yah after His ways, after His words. <clears throat> we, you shall know them by their fruits. How do they talk? How do they speak? What words do they allow to come out of their mouth? Is it good? Is it wholesome? Or is it wickedness? A tree cannot put forth good and bad fruit. It is either good or bad. And by every idle word we will be held accountable. I've done a message on this before, and it makes me really not want to speak a whole lot unless I'm speaking for Yah and His Word. Because I have enough I have to answer for. <clears throat> Idle talk will get you into trouble. So here, blasphemy of the, of, of, uh, in the Greek, G989, an evil of, speaking evil of. Do we speak evil of people? Do we speak evil of the Lord? Do we speak evil of His ways? I've had people tell me in the past, when we first came to the knowledge of the truth of His, of His Word from Genesis to Revelation, they called it garbage. They called it junk. <clears throat> Thought you guys had quit not be doing that since you guys had moved away from that place over there and get back to what's right. This is God's holy word. We are God's children. We are supposed to be set apart unto Him. How are we supposed to be a witness and a blessing and a shining light to others if we're doing the same things that the rest of the world is doing? If we're doing that, if we're speaking the same things that the world's doing, guess what? We're blaspheming Yah's name because we're not walking like we should. This message today is not for the people of the world. This message today is for people who claim to be children of the Most High God and how we walk in our lives and what kind of fruit we are bearing and what we are speaking, whether good, bad, or evil. Whether it's for Yah's honor and glory or whether it's for His dishonor. What kind of fruit are we bearing? Are we speaking what we should? <clears throat> are we taking Yah's name in vain? Are we walking like we should? Or are we reproaching Yah's name? <clears throat> and, in the, and in the English... <clears throat> The Webster Merriam Dictionary, the act or offense of speaking sacrilegiously about Yah or sacred things, profane talk, a lack of reverence 
for Yehovah our Elohim, the Lord our God. The act of claiming the attributes of a deity, taking credit for something that Yah has done in your life. You know, over the years, I used to take credit for stuff that I did. <clears throat> and in the past four years or so, even now more so than ever, it's all Yah's honor and glory. I'm only standing behind here because of Him. There ain't... It, when, when, when I want people to remember me, I want them to remember Yeshua. I want them to remember the Lord my God and that I lived my life pleasing to Him. I don't care what other people think or say about me. It's irrelevant just as long as I'm bringing honor and glory to my Father and not to myself because it ain't about me. It's all about Him. Amen. The act of claiming the attributes of a deity and the irrelevance toward Yehovah or something sacred. <clears throat> so when I was putting all this together and pondering on all these definitions of the word blasphemy in the Hebrew, the Greek, and the English, I've come to the conclusion to wrap it up. The sermon ain't done yet, though. That to blasphemy Yah's name is to be a hypocrite in your walk. So my question today to each and every one of us, <clears throat> you claim to be a child of the Most High God, how's your life line up with this right here? Are you doing the things that the Bible says, or are you being a hypocrite and not doing it? Are you not listening to wise counsel are you going about your life for your own glory? Or are you living your life for Yah? What actions are we doing with our lives on a day-to-day -day basis? Are we profaning His name? Or are we bringing glory to His name? <clears throat> There's a perfect example of this. <clears throat> Brother Paul brought this up a couple weeks ago in his message. Testing Yah was last week. To last night's message was, uh, oh, I forgot what it was. It'll come to me. I encourage everybody to go watch Brother Paul's last three messages because they go right alongside this. Religion, when they sit in Moses' seat, the Bible says to do as they do, just like the, it says in Scripture. Do as they say when they sit in the seat of Moses. Okay? Not religion, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Scratch that. I was thinking two different thoughts. So, in the Scriptures, when the scribes and the Pharisees would sit in the seat of Moses, Yeshua says, do as they say to do, but don't do as they do, because they were hypocrites. Now, my question pastors, teachers, if you want to call yourselves rabbis, what example are you setting for others to follow? Because they will follow your example. And then it goes to the family union, husbands and wives. What example are you setting for your children to follow? Are you setting a good example or are you setting a bad example? What fruit are you bearing? Are you bearing the fruit of righteousness or the fruit of wickedness? Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you watching? What are you listening to? Who are you hanging out with? What are you putting into your body? Because garbage in, garbage out. If that's what you put in, that's what you're going to get out. If you fill yourself with Yah's Word and you surround yourself with Yah's people <clears throat> with truth and love and righteousness, that's what's going to come out of you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. <clears throat> when we blasphemy Yah's name, we don't walk like we should. We sin. But before we dive into that, I want to take a look at what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. So <clears throat> I don't have much on blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because that's not where my main focus is. But I do have a question. What does anybody have an idea what they think blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. Anyone at all? 
can give it a shot, son. Not gonna say no. Not listening to the Holy Spirit when you should? In a general sense, that's kind of, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think one of the things that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is is attributing um, good things that, that God does, how yeah. His Spirit moves, and calling that, you know, attributing it to bad things, evil <coughs> things. Um, so, you know, the example that we have, and I'm sure you're going to go over it, um, the Pharisees attributed um, the good works that Yeshua was doing Yep. to to Beelzebub, right? Yep. Lord of the Flies, the dumb God, Satan. Um, and that's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They preferred their uh, traditions over His Word. No Pharisees said. That would be more of the blasphemy of the Son of Man. And, and I'll go over that. I'll, 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 I'll go over that. But what you had said, brother, is, <clears throat> is what my understanding of it, um, what James had said, that um, attributing the work of Yah to Satan and, taking, and somebody else taking credit for it. Because the Holy Spirit gives life. Rejecting Yah's. Thank you, re rejecting Yah's goodness. Thank you, that's, that's what I was getting at. <laughs> um, rejecting Yah's goodness. So, the unpardonable sin can also be wrapped up into rejecting Yah's laws and commandments. When we reject that life because the Torah is strength to our flesh and health to our bones. When we reject His truth, we reject that life. And we reject everything that is about Yah. And so we don't want to go down that path. So once Yah's revealed something to you, <clears throat> make sure that you don't reject it. Make sure you repent of it. And don't be that fool that rejects the counsel of Yahovah. <clears throat> um, I have it here, Matthew... At 31. Give me a second. Yep. So let me go ahead and read since we're right here. <clears throat> Matthew 12, 15 through 30 of what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. But when Yeshua knew it, he withdrew from there, and a great multitude followed him and healed them all. Yet he warned them not to make him known that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, <clears throat> and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench." till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Yeshua knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How <clears throat> then will this his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom to your sons cast them out. Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man? And then he will plunder his house. He who is not against me, 
He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. And then after that, it leads into the unpardonable sin. <clears throat> now in the Hebrew, there's another um, definition of blasphemy, and it is H5344, and is I, my, I'm not that good with Hebrew, so bear with me. It is N A W. K-A-B, and it is found in Leviticus 16, verses 10 through 16. Let's go ahead and read that right quick. Leviticus 16, 10 through 16. That is the wrong chapter. Give me a second. My apologies. Leviticus 24. Yeah, thank you. I wrote it down wrong on, on my notes, but right up there, so thank you. Leviticus 24, 10 through 16. <clears throat> now the son of an Israelite woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel. And this Israelite woman's son and a man of Israel fought each other in the camp. And the Israelite, Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name of Yehovah and cursed. And so they brought him to Moshe. His mother's name was Shilamith, the daughter of Debri, <clears throat> the tribe of Dan. Then they put him in custody that the mind of Yehovah might be shown to them. And Yehovah spoke to Moshe saying, Take outside the camp him who has cursed. Then let all who heard him lay their hands on his head and let all the con congregation stone him. Then you shall speak to the children of Israel saying, whoever curses his God shall bear his sin and whoever blasphemes the name of Jehovah shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall certainly stone him the stranger as well as him who is born in the land. When he blasphemes the name of Yehovah, he shall be put to death. <clears throat> so in the Old Testament, before Yeshua, we see here that blaspheming the name of Yehovah was a very serious penalty. They were stoned to death. Just as we see the unpardonable sin, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness for that. So when we reject, when we curse the name of Yehovah, when we say, I'm not doing it, call His name whatever you want to call it, when we don't adhere to His instructions and His righteousness, there is no hope for us. May we never go down that path to abhor Yah's name. All right, I found this article. The title of it is, What is Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? The concept of blasphemy against the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is mentioned in Mark chapter 3, verses 22 through 30, and Matthew 12, 22 through 32. We just read it. Yeshua had just performed a miracle. A demon-possessed man was brought to Yeshua, and the Adon cast the demon out, healing the man of blindness, blindness and muteness. The eyewitnesses to this miracle began to wonder if Yeshua was indeed the Messiah they had been waiting for. A group of Pharisees hearing the talk of the Messiah quickly squashed any budding faith of the crowd. It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons, they said in Matthew 12, 24. Yeshua rebukes the Pharisees with some logical arguments for why the, he is not casting out demons in the power of Satan. Matthew 12, 25 through 29. Then he speaks of the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. The term blasphemy can be generally defined as defiant irrelevance. E irreverence, sorry. The term can be applied to such sins as cursing God or willfully degrading things relating to God. 
Blasphemy is also attributing some evil to God or denying him some good that we should attribute to him. This particular case of blasphemy, however, is called the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The Pharisees, having witnessed irrefutable proof that Yeshua was working miracles in the power of the Holy Spirit, claimed instead that the Adon was possessed by a demon. <clears throat> We can find this in Matthew 12, 24. Yeshua said, this is a very specific about what the Pharisees did to commit blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit has to do with accusing Yeshua Messiah of being demon possessed instead of spirit filled. They purposefully attributed the work of the Spirit to the devil, even though they knew the truth and they had the proof right there in front of them. Yeshua declared their willful blindness to be unpardonable. Their blasphemy against the Holy Spirit was their final rejection of Elohim's grace. They had set their course and God was going to let them sail into perdition unhindered. So when we do the same thing, we put ourselves in the same mindset that they had and we set our course of action to the same place that where they're at <clears throat> Yeshua told the crowd that the Pharisees blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come the immediate result of the Pharisees public rejection of Messiah is seen in the next chapter Yeshua for the first time told them many things in parables Matthew 13 3 and Mark 4 2 the disciples were puzzled at Yeshua's change of teaching method <clears throat> and Yeshua explained this use of parables because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you but not to them though seen they do not see, though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Yeshua began to veil the truth with parables and metaphors as a direct result of the Jewish leader's official denunciation of him. <clears throat> Praise Yah for eyes to see and ears to hear, that He has opened up our hearts and our eyes and our ears, and opened up our hearts to His truth. Mishpaha, may we never become to a place where we have our hearts hardened, thinking that we have it all figured out, and attributing power to somebody other than Yah. Because when Yah does a miracle, when Yah provides, when Yah moves by His Holy Spirit, He gives us life. He calls somebody out of darkness and into His marvelous light. When He reveals His truth, it is not demon-possessed. It is not a demonic doctrine that others talk about, that I've heard with my own two ears that people have attributed Sabbath-keeping as a, a demonic doctrine. It's not. It leads to life, and it gives life everlasting. There have been other teachers and preachers that have said, we don't have to keep the commandments. We don't have to keep the truth. That's done away with. Mishpaha, don't listen to them. That is a demonic doctrine. That is from Satan himself. Torah gives us life. It gives us life eternal. As Revelation 22, 14 said, Blessed are those who do His commandments, for they shall have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And then in the very next verse, it says, But outside are do dogs and whoremongers and those who love and practice a lie. If you love and practice a lie, then you, you have no place found in the new Jerusalem. <clears throat> now, when I was putting this message together, I was looking at different articles and I had actually found one found a couple of them, that they had said that we cannot blasphemy the Holy Spirit anymore. And I'm like, that's wrong. That, that didn't settle with me at all. <clears throat> because they're taking what they found in Scripture and saying that since Yeshua is not on this earth, we can't see the miracles that Yeshua did. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit that does miracles on a daily basis. 
So we can still blasphemy the Holy Spirit. We still are in danger of doing that if we're not careful. Like I tell my son all the time, make sure that we're quick to hear, quick to think, and slow to speak. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. Make sure you listen to what the Holy Spirit tells you and only speak what He tells you to speak. And be careful. There's an old children's song, Oh, be careful little ears what you hear. Oh, be careful little eyes what you see. And oh, be careful little mouth what you speak. For the Father up above is looking down below. Little children, men and women of God, be careful what we see, what we hear, and what we say. Because it will have an influence on our lives. <clears throat> All right, the next section of this message, I'm going to go in on talking about the blasphemy of the Son of Man. We've kind of touched on it a little bit. But what is the blasphemy of the Son of Man? Anybody have what they might have an understanding of? Anybody? <clears throat> well, good. Praise you. I'm glad you all showed up. I'll <clears throat> give you my understanding of it. <laughs> to blasphemy against the Son of Man is to scoff, is to disrespect, is to scorn and is to hate everything about Yah. Blasphemy is verbal or written reproach of God's name, His holy character, His work, and His attributes. We already read Leviticus 24, 10 through 16. Followers of God are responsible to make sure their behavior does not incite others to blasphemy Elohim. Let's turn to Romans chapter 2, verses 17 through 29. Like I said, this message is not for the people of this world. This message is for people who claim to be of Yah, <clears throat> who claim to walk in His ways, who claim the name of Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ. I don't care if you're in a Sunday-going church. I don't care if you're Torah observant and you keep the biblical Sabbath. If we don't have the love of God in our heart, if we don't walk like we should, if our behavior is less than what anything of what the Scriptures say, we are blaspheming Yah's name. If we don't keep the commandments of God, we're bringing shame unto His name. If we don't do what we're told to do in these scriptures, we're walking in light, we're walking in darkness and not in light. We're bringing a reproach unto our heavenly Father's name. Romans chapter number 2, <clears throat> verse number 17. Indeed, you are called a Jew and rest on the law and you make your boast in God, and know His will, and approve the things that are excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having a form of knowledge and truth in the law. You, therefore, who teach another, <clears throat> do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? For the name of God is blaspheming among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written." For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. But if you are a breaker of the law, your circumcision is become uncircumcision. Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, will not his, uncir 
will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And will not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you who, even with your written code and circumcision, are a transgressor of the law? For he is not a Jew who is outwardly, nor is circumcis- nor is circumcision. <clears throat> that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. Like I had said earlier, it does not matter what anybody thinks, what you do, but only if we are pleasing our Heavenly Father by walking in His ways, circumcising our hearts to follow after Him to be obedient to His laws, His commandments all the days of our lives. Paul scolds those who claim to be saved through the law and yet live in sin. Paul tells them, God's name is blaspheming among the Gentiles because of you. Let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter number 1. First Timothy chapter number one. <coughs> huh? Chapter two. Chapter two. I'm sorry, chapter two. First Timothy two. My apologies. Again. Maybe the, uh, maybe the screen is wrong, but your notes are right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably so. All right, first, let's go ahead and read 1 Timothy chapter number 2. Therefore, I exalt first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, this man, Yeshua Messiah, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Messiah and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth." I desire that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with proprietary and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission, and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. Then Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, holiness with self-control. So just a few quality traits of what men and women are to be like who claim to be children of the Most High God. He gives us standards to set us apart, to be holy, to be righteous, mishpaha. Not to be loud and obnoxious and going around and living like the world does and living a hypocritical life, doing one thing on one day and then the exact next day doing something totally different. How are we living our lives and how are we letting the light of Messiah Yeshua shine through us? Are we living that set-apart life? Because God does know our hearts. And the Bible says that it is wicked above all things, and only Yah can know it. I think you want it, First Timothy 1. Is it supposed to be verse 20? Yeah, I know. I There's... Did I read the wrong one again? I mean, that was a good, that was a good passage of scripture. 
and it goes right alongside with what I'm Which doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it wasn't really about blasphemy, but I mean, it sure is good. <laughs> All right, let's go to 1 Timothy 1. Ver let's just go ahead and read 18 through 20. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience, which having re some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck, of whom are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I, believe, I delivered to Satan that they may learn not to blasphemy. It's making sure we're living our lives and conducting ourselves. And it goes right alongside with uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 2. Living our lives not like the rest of the world. Not just carving out 20-30 minutes, maybe a couple hours once a week for God. But how are our lives reflected in the community we're in? How do they know who you are in the community? How do they know you online? You might not know them, but what do they post? Do they post good and evil, or do they post just good? You shall know them by your fruits, by their, by their fruits. So I pose the question again, Mishpaha. Are we blaspheming Yah's name? Are we living a hypocritical life? Are we living a life bringing glory to Him or profaning His name? <clears throat> Blasphemy by de definition is both deliberate and direct. That being the case, a true believer in Yeshua Messiah will not and cannot commit blasphemy because we won't want to, because the Holy Spirit is going to convict us about the way we're living our lives before we even make a foolish decision like that. Even so, we should be careful to reflect God's holiness and never misrepresent the glory, the authority, and the character of our Heavenly Father. And I want to give a perfect example of this. There's many of them in Scripture. But I want to turn to 2 Samuel chapter number 12, verses 7 through 14. And this one really hit home. Because as you know, David was a man after Yah's own heart. Second Samuel chapter number 12, starting in verse number 7. Then Nathan said to David, You are this man. Thus says Jehovah Elohim of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And that had been too little. I also gave... I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of Yehovah to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says Jehovah, Behold, I will raise up adversary against you from your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun." So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against Yehovah. And Nathan said to David, Yehovah also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of Yehovah to blasphemy this, the child who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house. So we see here, David's sin that he did in secret. He committed adultery with Bathsheba. He killed Bathsheba's husband. He committed 
sin after sin after sin. And it wasn't until Nathan the prophet brought it up to him. David didn't hesitate. David knew what he did was wrong and he hid his knees and he repented immediately. And we're going to get into that as well. But David misrepresented God's name. He misrepresented God's character. Take this story and apply it to our lives. What are we doing on a daily basis? Where are we going on a daily basis? What are we listening to on a daily basis? Are we profaning God's name? Are we... What are others seeing in our lives that could be bringing blasphemy against Yah's name? Are we living up to the character of God's name? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? Or do we even care? <clears throat> what does our fruit look like, Mishpaha? You look at religion. You look at the Catholic Church, the Methodist Church, all these other churches, the Baptist Church. They all have something that they hold near and dear to. And I'm not saying that they have everything wrong. I'm not saying they have everything right. But a lot of them, they do one thing. They go to church one day and then they do something totally different. They, they're hypocrites. They go like this. They're not solid in their walk. They're blaspheming. They're bringing a bad name to Yah. And we wonder why we can't get people to come fellowship, to come to the knowledge of the truth, because they see all these other pe religious people claiming to have Messiah. But yet they're living hypocritical lives. They despise the teachings. They despise Yah's Word. But yet they'll go and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus for two hours. And then go back to their lives right after that. Are we those kind of people as well? Are we living set apart lives unto Him? Lip service. Lip service. For they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Where is your heart at? Is your, uh, that's one message that Brother Paul did, rending your heart. Is your heart rendered unto Him? Is your heart circumcised to follow after Him no matter what the cost, no matter what anybody says about you or to you? Because it ain't about us. It ain't about them. They're not going to be standing with us at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to be standing there alone. And we're going to have to give an account the way that we lived our lives. And if we profane, if we blaspheme His name, if we reject His Son, Yeshua, if we reject His truth, if we don't circumcise our hearts to follow after Him, we put ourselves in a very, very grave danger, Mishpaha. What character are we representing? The character of Saul, where he was unrepentant, he was doing what was right in his own eyes? Or are we representing the character of David, where he hit his knees and he repented immediately? Yah spared his life. Yah didn't kill him. But the sword never left David's house. He had, to, he had to reap what he sown. But yet Yah still had mercy on him because he had his heart circumcised to be in that state of repentance. <clears throat> Religion, man, has turned the spotless bride of Messiah into a dirty prostitute. Now correct me if I'm wrong. Because religion says I can go do whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. I can hang out with whoever I want to hang out with. I can listen to whatever I want to listen to. I can do whatever I want to the temple because this is my body. It's my choices. No, it's not. We are the temple of the living Elohim. This body belongs to God and God alone. And He gives us specific directions on what to do and what not to do. He tells us to observe His holy feast in Leviticus 23. He tells us not to eat swine because it's an abomination to Him, Isaiah 66. And in Leviticus 11 and other clean and unclean animals, what to eat and what not to. He tells us to abstain 
from certain things. Why? Because he loves us and he wants the very best for us. It is his character. It's his house. It's his rules. It ain't ours. Proverbs 16, 18 again. Pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before the fall. Don't be prideful and arrogant thinking that we have it all figured out because we don't. We're constantly learning something new. If he's allowed you to wake up today and you're, you're breathing, you're upright, you're taking nourishment, guess what? That's his grace and mercy given to us today that he has not destroyed us, giving us a chance to repent of our sins and iniquities to be part of that spotless bride Yeshua is coming back for. Not a dirty prostitute. That religion has painted the bride of Messiah to go out and do whatever she wants to. That's hypocrisy. Yeshua's coming back for a spotless bride. <coughs> there is hope. The word hope translated into Hebrew is tikva. Expectant end. There is hope. But that hope is in Yeshua, Messiah Himself, and we have to follow what the Word of Yah says. If we have blasphemed the Son of Man, which I'm sure all of us have, I know I have. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His truth is not in us. Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. Love these verses of Scripture. I probably use them almost every time I preach because they are a good reminder of how we need to be. Heaven is my, thus says Yehovah, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist, says Yehovah. Here's the key. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. Do we tremble enough at Yah's word, Mishpah? We need to be like David. Psalm 51, when his sin was brought before him by the prophet Nathan. I want to read the whole prayer of David of Psalm 51. It is a prayer of repentance, a prayer of forgiveness when David cried out to Yah to forgive him for the sin that he had done for bringing a bad name to the character of Yah. Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. <clears throat> O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. 
Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. <clears throat> Circumcise your heart to be in that state of humility and repentance. Mishpaha, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to sin. <coughs> there is forgiveness. There is repentance. And Yah is waiting for us to confess them, to be like David, to, rep to acknowledge them before our Savior, Master Yeshua. He is the mediator between God and man. Not some guy sitting in a box or somebody on the other side of the phone. But Yeshua Messiah alone can forgive our sins. And He is ready to forgive. Circumcise your hearts. Humble yourself before Him. And turn from your wicked ways. <clears throat> First John chapter number 1. A lot of people don't like the book of 1 John. I love it. <clears throat> the book of 1 John talks about walking in righteousness and holiness. 1 John chapter number 1, starting in verse number 1, That which we have heard, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen, and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested to us. <clears throat> That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from Him and declare to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Yeshua Messiah, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Here's the key, Mishpaha. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Chapter 2. My little children, these things I write to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now by this we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him and does not keep His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps His word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in Him. He who says He abides him in Him ought Himself also to walk just as He walked. How did he walk, Mishpaha? Samuel, how did he walk? According to his father's word. Uprightly, righteously, and holy. Now, he was perfect, sinless. We're not sinless. If we think we are, then I would go back and read the whole Bible. <clears throat> Start in Genesis 1.1. We're all in need of a Savior, just as David said, and in sin, my mother conceived me. We were all born in sin. We are all born and on our way to a devil's hell. And it wasn't until the Father used His Holy Spirit to reveal His Son Yeshua and His truth to us and bring us to that place of repentance. Sin. Uh, let's turn to 1 John 3, 4. It ain't up there. But 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness is a translation for Torahlessness. I would not have known sin if it had not been for the Torah. 
Sin is defined as breaking God's commandments, breaking God's laws, blaspheming His name. If we claim to be part of the body of Messiah and we're not walking like we should, we're bringing reproach, we're bringing a bad name to our Savior and Master and King. How are we living our lives, Mishpaha? <clears throat> Whatever it may be in your life that you're not willing to let go of, I promise you it's not worth it. What is the 30 pieces of silver that you're hanging on to? Just as Judas Iscariot sold out Yeshua for 30 pieces of silver. What are, what's holding us back from following Yah fully and completely surrendered unto Him? What are we not willing to let go of? James 1.14, this ain't up there either. Um... James 1.14 <clears throat> But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Verse 15 Then when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death. What's inside of us that is hindering us from following Him fully and is causing others to not follow Yah fully, and is bringing reproach unto our Father's name. It's inside of us, and we need to repent of it immediately and turn away from it. Fast and pray and cry out to God before it's too late, Mishpaha. <clears throat> and I'll end with this passage of Scripture. I think that's it's the last Scripture. I'm not done yet. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verses 1 through 9. I do have this one right. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times or dangerous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For this for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. <clears throat> I believe 100% that we're living in those perilous times. And it's even now more important than ever for us to be sanctified, to be set apart, to not take the Lord's name in vain, to not blaspheme His name, to set ourselves away from the world, to get away from these kind of people. We need to surround ourselves with the same kind of people that are on the same mission as we are. Not blaspheming Yah's name. Not <clears throat> taking credit for what Yah's doing. Not giving credit to Satan for what Yah is doing. Yah is doing a good work in each and every one of us, convicting us of sin and of iniquity. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in this world. And if we are a child of Yah, we are to live that righteous and holy and set-apart life. We are to be that children of light. And may the light of Messiah Yeshua so shine through us that others may see and would glorify our Father who is in heaven. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Just a quick recap. Denying Yah's good works. Rejecting of His truth. Blasphemy of the Son of Man. Hypocrisy. Living in sin. Whose, whose character are we representing? Are we representing the spotless bride of Messiah or the dirty prostitute of what religion portrays as being part of the body? 
Blasphemy is also saying that we no longer have to obey Yah's laws or commandments. It is deliberate disobedience to Yah. So which vessel are you? A vessel of righteousness or a vessel of disobedience? The choice is yours today. Shabbat Shalom, family.